This is my review of My Hero Academia, Chapter 217. The new power and all for one. So let me just start off by saying that this first page is absolutely freaking amazing. I, I know it doesn't look like much, but this is Bakugo and Deku training together. Bakugo helping Deku to unlock this new power, to get stronger, to grow. This is something we wouldn't have seen 50 chapters ago, 100 chapters ago. It just, it wouldn't have been possible. And yet here it is, he's helping him. Of course, he's still the, you know, same old Bakugo trying to kill him, basically screaming, Why are you holding back? But they have grown so much closer over the series, and it is just amazing to see them working together now. And from there, we see Deku, Bako, and All Might sitting together in the meeting room. The meeting where the room where Deku and All Might have always talked alone, sharing their own thoughts, their own issues, the stuff that they can't share with anyone else about what's going on with him. And now Bakugo is here. That's just absolutely amazing to me. Though it does raise some death flags for All Might. Now that Deku has some uh, someone else to talk to about this, All Might has less of a role to play. I'm not saying he's just going to die next chapter or anything like that. I'm just saying there's less of a role for him now that Deku can rely on someone else and has someone else to talk to about all this. And Bako, he's smart. Uh, I know the original uh, design for this character was this goody two-shoe who's just amazing at everything. Brilliant, smart, popular, all that. But Bako is still smart. I mean, he just took in all this information. He's understanding it. He's like, hmm, well, what about All for One? Could he have a role in this? And even All Might is just impressed by like, wow, you understood it all very quickly. Good for you. Deku and Bako working together now is absolutely amazing, and I just love how much the character has grown without changing too much from his roots, you know? He's still the angry, explosive guy, but now he's still trying to help raise up Deku instead of just pushing him down all the time. He realizes the two of them can grow together and still continue fighting, and that is just so amazing for his character. I absolutely love it. From there, Deku begins to wonder if he himself might have accidentally locked up the power when he said that he thought he wasn't worthy of it right now, if he somehow put a mental lock on it. And if he did, that might be for the best right now. As we've seen, the power reacts to his emotions, so when he's angry or upset, he just explodes outwards in all directions, and it's not controllable. If he can go into a fight and say, okay, I'm going to a fight now, lock off, and use the powers, that'd be very helpful instead of just you know, someone takes a seat in the bus, and he just starts shooting at black whips in all directions. So yeah, this mental lock could definitely be a big help to him in controlling the power, especially when he doesn't want to use it by accident. This next page is really just absolutely amazing again. It's Class B and Class A meeting together, having fun, talking about the matches, what happened, and just really bonding with each other. I said in the last video that they were just being shown off now so we could better see them in the upcoming sports festival. But now I'm thinking they just might be around from now on. I mean, we've been hinting at, they've been hinted at, we've seen them time to time, but I think when the next big thing happens, they're going to be there right beside Class A, and they're going to have to team up to stop whoever the next big bad's going to be. Obviously not all of them, because that would be impossible to manage, but... Definitely, there's definitely going to be more team-ups with Class B from now on, I think. And poor little Mineta. I know he's a pervert, but I'm fairly certain what she's doing to him is illegal on this page. Uh, Ludovico, Ludovico machine, whatever you call it. Uh, I mean, it's just in the corner, so I doubt it's going to have much of an effect, but it'd be really funny if next time we see him, he's like in a suit and tie, just mumbling, I respect women. Women are not objects. I will not touch women. Which, like I said, it's just in the corner, so it's unlikely this is going to come back, but if it does, that would be freaking hilarious. And then Todoroki shows up, and he's like, how were you... Why were you telling me not to hold back when you had a second quirk, too? That's mighty suspicious. Deku's like, no, no, uh, that's it just popped up. I didn't know about it before today. He's like, oh, okay, sorry about that. 
<laughs> Even Baku was like, you are a moron. That, that is not a story that people should believe. I know quirks are weird, but... More people should be asking Deku questions about this, seriously. Then Todoroki ends up questioning his father about learning Flash Bright, the true power, the full force of his abilities. And of course, Endeavor is responding to the text while he's crushing a villain's skull in his hands. <sighs> Endeavor. I'm starting to like him again. I know a lot of people were angry when he seemed to have a redemption arc of sorts, but... I know that's not over. If the theories are right about his other son, then things are going to get pretty insane for him, and something tells me the world might not respect him quite so much when all that's said and done. From there, we learn that Shinso is going to be placed in one of the classes, It's though we still don't know which one. Uh, again, I'm leaning towards Class A because I think they're going to want him close to control Deku if he ever loses control again, and... It'd definitely be interesting to have him as a main character from now on, but like I said, also, Class B could be showing up more and more from now on, so you never know. And then President Mike and Ozawa are talking, and he mentions someone. Shirokumo. Is this about Shirokumo? And if I had to guess, I'm going to say that was a student with power similar to Shinzo, and... People kept looking down on him, looking down on him because it's, they said his quirk was evil and eventually he became a villain or eventually he died or something. It feels like foreshadowing for something that's going to come up in the future. And then we got Eri, and Eri is fucking adorable. Seriously. Er, we see her in the bottom panel. It's the dark side of UA! She actually literally fears Monoma and... I've said before I thought he was going to turn out to be an evil villain, but it just seems too obvious right now. I, I feel like at a certain point, they're all going to be gathered around and someone's going to say, there is a secret villain amongst us, and everyone's going to point to Mona and be like, it's not me! But, yeah, so Ari is here, and she is freaking adorable again. Like I said last week, they were going to use Monoma to try to copy Ari's quirk to teach her how to use it and to get a better understanding of uh, how it works and everything, but he drew a blank. Which, we finally know what that means. It basically means that certain quirks require a build-up of something. Fat gum requires building up calories so he can absorb the blows. Deku requires the power that's been built up over countless generations. And if that was not the case, then Monoma would have literally blown his arms off, as Deku said in this chapter. Monoma would have been saying bye-bye to his limbs otherwise. Which, I really wish he'd said that out loud, because Mona's reaction to that would have been pretty hilarious. But then, once again, we see Eri being freaking adorable. Blaming herself for everything that's gone wrong, and Deku has to comfort her, reminding her that she saved him. In what had to be the best fight of the entire series. Seriously, I cannot wait for the anime to get there, because that will be freaking amazing. But then uh, Deku convinces her that her powers can be used for good and that she will eventually master them. And that encourages Deku because he's like, she'll master the powers and I'll master them too. Together we'll figure out a way to use our powers for good. That raises another good point. It, it's possible that Eri interacting with Deku and using her quirk on him is what triggered the other users of One for All to wake up and finally be able to give their powers to Deku. I mean, a lot of people, even Baku, are suspecting that All for One may have done something may have somehow triggered the powers to awaken, but I'm thinking Eri could have had something to do with it as well. And that's the chapter. Uh, it looks like it's going to be on break next week, which is good. The author's definitely been feeling off lately. The chapters he re keeps releasing are very short, though packed. I mean, not like Hunter x Hunter packed with just thousands of paragraphs on every page, but still packed. And yet, at the same time, the quality hasn't gone down. I heard somewhere they was moving offices, so maybe that's what's been causing the short chapters. Maybe he doesn't have as much time to work because he's busy getting things ready for the move or whatever. But uh, hopefully after next week, we're back on to the longer chapters. I'm honestly not sure what's going to happen next. I mean, we need it. It's basically going to be the start of a new arc. Maybe a whole training arc with Todoroki training with his father. Deku training with All Might and Bakugo, and Eri training with them, trying to figure out how to use her ability without 
just going on a complete rampage. Definitely not sure. League of Villains has been kind of quiet for a while. I don't think the next arc is going to be all for one breaking out of prison, but we'll see what happens. All right, so I will see you all uh, if you just watch these videos in two weeks, if you watch my other manga reviews next week. So, peace.